In this video, we're going to focus on using the Gaussian elimination to solve a system of equations with three variables. So let's start with this problem. Let's say we have x plus y minus z is equal to negative 2 and 2x minus y plus z. Let's say that's equal to 5, negative x plus 2y plus 2z, and let's say that's equal to 1. So how can we use matrices to solve this system of equations? The first thing we need to do is convert it to an augmented matrix. So let's write the coefficients in this matrix. So we have 1x plus 1y minus 1z, and let's use a vertical bar to separate the left side from the right side of the equation. So I'm going to put negative 2 on this side. Now, for the second equation, the coefficients are 2, negative 1, and 1. Now, for the last equation, it's negative 1, 2, 2, and 1. Now, what I'm going to do is convert this matrix into row echelon form. So I want these three numbers to be 1, and I want these numbers to be 0. So let's make those three numbers in blue 0 first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add row 1 and row 3 together, and I'm going to apply that change to row 3. So first, let's rewrite the matrix. The first row is not going to change. All of the changes will be applied to row 3. So I can rewrite row 1. Row 2 is not going to change. Now, row 1 plus row 3. So for column 1, it's going to be 1 plus negative 1. And so that's going to be 0. And then it's 1 plus 2, which is 3. And then it's negative 1 plus 2 which is 1. And then it's going to be negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. Now the next thing I want to do is convert this 2 into a 0. So I'm going to apply the changes to row 2. I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 2, because this will become negative 2, and then add that to row 2. So I'm going to write it out step by step for this one. So here's the operation that I'm applying. It's called the matrix row operation. So for column 1 and in row 1, we have an entry 1. So R1 is going to be 1. And for row 2, column 1, the entry is 2. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So this is going to be 0. Now for column 2, we're going to use these two numbers. So in column 2, R1 is 1, and R2 is negative 1. So this is going to give us negative 3. Now for column 3, R1 is negative 1, and R2 is 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, and then add 1 to that, that will give you 3. Now, for the fourth column, R1 is negative 2 and r2 is 5. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, plus 5, that's 9. Everything else will be the same, so let's rewrite the other numbers. And then let's get rid of this. So what do you think is the next thing that we should do at this point? 
Now, we need this number to be a zero. So all we got to do is add rows two and three. And we need to apply the changes in row three. So it's going to be R2 plus R3. So row ones and row two will stay the same. So if we add R2 plus R3 from column one, that's zero plus zero. So that's equal to zero. And for column two, R2 plus R3 is going to be negative three plus three, which is zero, which is what we want. And then for column three, it's three plus one, which is going to be four. And then for the fourth column, nine plus negative one is eight. Now, if I wanted to, I can convert this back to a system of linear equations and use back substitution to get x, y, and z in this form. But what I want to do is convert it to row echelon form. So I want to convert these three numbers into a 1. I don't need to change it. This is already a 1. But these two, they need to be converted into a 1. So therefore, simultaneously, for row 2, I'm going to multiply by negative 1 third R2. And for row 3, I'm going to multiply by 1 fourth. So row 1 will not change. So let's rewrite that. And row 2, we're going to multiply everything by negative 1 third, or divide everything by negative 3. So negative 3 divided by negative 3, or negative 3 times negative 1 third, that's positive 1. 3 times negative 1 third is negative 1. And 9 times negative 1 third is negative 3. Now, 4 times 1 fourth is 1. And 8 times 1 fourth is 2. So now what we need to do is convert this back into a system of linear equations. So column 1 is the coefficients for x. This is for y and z. So the first equation is x plus 1y minus 1z is equal to 2. For the second one is 1y minus 1z is equal to negative 3. And the last one is 1x is equal to 2. So in this form, we automatically get the solution for x. Now, it shouldn't be x, it should be z, because this is the column for z. So we should have that z is equal to 2 and not x. So we have the solution for z. And one other thing I missed, this is negative 2. I forgot to transfer the sign here, so that should be negative 2 as well. So now that we have z, let's plug it into the second equation to get y. So y minus z, or y minus 2, is equal to negative 3. Now let's add 2 to both sides. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Therefore, y is equal to negative 1. Now, let's take y and z, and let's plug it into the first equation. So we're going to have x plus y, where y is negative 1, minus z, and z is 2. That's equal to negative 2. So negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And if we add 3 to both sides, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So x is equal to 1. Now we have the final answer. So in the form of x, y, z, it's going to be 1, negative 1, comma 2. So this is the solution. And keep this in mind, this form is row echelon form, where you have a diagonal of 1s and zeros beneath it. It really doesn't matter what's here. So keep that in mind. So that's the row echelon form. Now let's work on another example. So let's say we have 2x plus y minus z. Let's say that's equal to 1. And 3x plus 2y plus z. Let's say that's equal to 10. And 2x minus y plus 2z is equal to 6. 
So use the Gaussian elimination with back substitution to solve this system of equations. Now, I'm not going to convert it all the way to row echelon form. I simply want to make these three a zero. If I do that, I have enough to solve the system of equations using elimination. That is the Gaussian elimination. So first, let's convert it into an augmented matrix. So the coefficients are 2, 1, negative 1, and then 3, 2, 1, with a 10 on the other side, and then 2, negative 1, 2, with a 6. So I'm going to convert this number into a 0 first. So therefore, on row 3, I'm going to subtract row 1 and row 3. So 2 minus 2 is 0. And then 1 minus negative 1, that's 1 plus 1. So that's going to be 2. And then negative 1 minus 2, that's negative 3. And 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Everything else will stay the same. So now, notice that if I subtract, actually, I need to make this a 0. I wanted to subtract these two. If I do that, this will no longer be 0. Now, I'm going to apply changes to the second row. So I'm going to multiply this number by negative 3. So this could become negative 6. And I'm going to multiply this number by 2, so that could become positive 6. And then apply the changes to row 2, so that this will turn into 0. But first, let's rewrite everything that don't change. So rows 1 and 3 will not change. So now let's write this equation or this rule operation, negative 3r1 plus 2r2. So for column 1, r1 is 2, and r2, that's row 2, column 1, the entry is 3. So we have negative 6 plus 6, and that's equal to 0. Now for column 2, we're dealing with those numbers. So r1 is 1, and Row 2, column 2, the entry is 2. So that's a negative 3 plus 4, which is positive 1. Now let's take the information for column 3. So in row 1, column 3, the entry is negative 1. And for row 2, column 3, the entry is 1. So we have negative 3 times negative 1, which is 3, plus 2 times 1, so that's equal to 5. Now for column 4, row 1, that's 1, and for row 2, it's 10. So we have negative 3 plus 20, which is 17. Now the next thing I need to do is make this a 0. So I need to apply changes to row 3. So I need to multiply this by negative 2 and then add it to this. So it's going to be negative 2 r2 plus r3. So let's write the operation first. And let's be careful with every step. So row 1 is going to be the same. Row 2 is not going to change. But row 3 will change. So for row 2 and 3, column 1, it's 0 and 0. So negative 2 times 0 plus 0, that's not going to change. That's going to be 0. But for column 2, 
we should have some changes. So for column 2, row 2, the entry is 1. And column 2, row 3, the entry is 2. So negative 2 plus 2, that will give us the 0 that we wanted. Now, for column 3, row 2, that's going to be 5. And row 3 is negative 3. So two, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10 plus negative 3. That's going to be negative 13. And then we have column 4. Negative 2 times R2, which is 17, plus R3, which is negative 5. So this is negative 34 plus negative 5. That's equal to negative 39. Now, once you have these three zeros, you can go ahead and get all the answers without putting it in row echelon form, which is what we're going to do in this example. So this is x, y, and z. So the first formula is going to be 2x plus 1y minus 1z, and that's equal to 1. And then it's going to be y plus 5z which is equal to 17, and then negative 13z is equal to negative 39. So let's start with this formula. Let's divide both sides by negative 13. Negative 39 divided by negative 13 is negative 3, and that is the solution. Actually, not negative 3. I take that back. That is positive 3, but that's the solution for z. z is equal to 3. Two negative numbers, when divided by each other, should give us a positive result. Now let's take z and plug it into the second equation. So y plus 5 times 3 is equal to 17. 5 times 3 is 15. And if we subtract both sides by 15, 17 minus 15 is 2. So y is equal to 2. Now, let's move on to the first equation. So let me get rid of this. So we have 2x plus y, and y is 2 minus z, but z is 3. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And if we add 1 to both sides, 1 plus 1 is 2. And if we divide both sides by 2, we can see that x is equal to to 1. So now we have everything. So the answer is 1, 2, 3. x is 1, y is 2, z is 3. And that's it.